Well, it's the new year and last night your mom... Well, anyway, it's 2023 and it's been a while. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three things uh, that I've used uh, extensively over the past month and have started to get to like them even more. Let's start off with the Sony LinkBuds S. Now, Sony's premium line of in-ear earphones, the XM4s, are already sort of the flagship or the benchmark for really good quality in-ear style earphones. The LinkBuds S are a cheaper version of that, almost half price in certain cases, but they do offer up active noise cancellation. Now, initially there were a lot of questions about the existence of the LinkBuds S. Uh, they could only pair with one product at a time. They offered up noise cancellation, but it wasn't as great as the XM4s. And the Link Buds were originally supposed to be open back earphones or open side earphones, but now suddenly they're active noise canceling earphones. So I was a little confused, but the more I've used them over the past few weeks, uh, the more I started to enjoy them. First of all, let's talk about design and comfort. They're extremely lightweight and they're extremely comfortable in the ear. You can wear them for extended periods of time and they don't feel like they're bogging you down or there's something heavy in your ear, uh, which is what the case with most in-ear noise canceling earphones is. The LinkBuds S also have an open channel. So when you are listening to music on noise cancellation, your ears don't feel plugged. Uh, they do have that provision built in and it just makes the overall experience uh, much nicer. The drivers are nice and robust and you do get a good amount of bass out of the box as well. And then you can use the Sony headphones app to customize the equalization. You also have things like 360 audio reality setup, which is a typical thing with Sony headphones. And then you also do have the ability to turn on active noise cancellation, which is also based on the ambience. So it'll automatically react. So if you start talking, it'll pause the music and also turn off the noise cancellation. And then when you stop talking, it'll resume uh, the music as well as the noise cancellation. Sony also pushed out an update which now allows it to pair with multiple devices. So if you're listening to music for long periods of time and if you just want to have in-ear earphones that are not really taxing on the ear, the LinkBuds S are a really good proposition. What I am missing are the memory foam ear tips that you get with the XM4s. You don't get those, but you can buy memory foam ear tips for almost all earphones nowadays. So you can definitely check this out for that. The second product, of course, is uh, this Marshall Wuburn 3 speaker. Now, Marshall's speakers and amplifiers are industry known, but now they're more into consumer audio and headphones. And uh, these are basically at home use uh, built-in speakers. They're powered speakers and they do offer up multiple connectivity options. And you do have a certain improvement on the design. So the third generation of the Woburn does offer up a completely new look uh, versus the first and the second generation. And uh, you do have a lot of recycled materials in there as well, as well as the leather that you see is vegan leather. And uh, the one thing that they've done is they've removed uh, natural materials from the back and replaced it with plastic. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, but it doesn't affect the sound at all. But you do have plastic on the back, which sort of takes away from the authentic Marshall feel, I feel. But anyway, on the top, you have this really nice analog control uh, switch pad thing, which allows you to not only turn on uh, the Wuburn 3 with a toggle switch, you have nice knurled knobs uh, that allow you to control the bass, uh, the treble, as well as the volume. And uh, then you also have a switch to uh, control your music tracks, as well as uh, the ability to switch between different inputs. So it does have HDMI arc. So if you do have a television uh, that does support HDMI output, uh, you can get uh, audio to play through this. Again, it's a little finicky, but it will work with most televisions. I tested it out uh, with the Sony TV and uh, it works uh, fine. What's also interesting is that the Wuburn 3 also has uh, an app which allows you to not only update the software but also manage certain controls on the speaker. And uh, the Wuburn 3 also has a LE audio chip in there which once a software update is available for the hardware, you'll be able to connect with multiple Wuburn speakers in your house directly from uh, the app and then you can play music on all of them together simultaneously, which will be great, but it doesn't work out of the box. So that's a little bit of a letdown. But as far as the music quality is concerned, here are a few samples. I'll also include a, another Marshall speaker that I have, and I'll also show you a comparison with uh, the HomePod. So let's have a listen.
Rubin 3 also is a three-way audio speaker, so you do have a subwoofer, a mid-range, and tweeters, and uh, this is the first time they've done this for uh, the Wuburn. Previously, they were two-channel, this time they're three-channel. So you can save some money, get the previous generation one, but if you want forward compatibility and you also want the ability to have Bluetooth LE audio, uh, then the Wuburn 3 definitely makes up uh, for uh, future-proofing. Uh, as far as a few years is concerned. And then you also have HDMI ARC, so if you do have a home uh, theater setup experience uh, that you want to add uh, the Wuburn 3 to, then uh, you can do that as well. Speaking of TV experiences, uh, let's talk about our third product, which is the new Apple TV 4K. Now available in 64 gigabyte as well as 128 gigabyte, uh, the top variant also has a one gigabit ethernet port. But if you don't want that, the 64 gigabyte variant, which is now cheaper at just 15,000 rupees, is basically good enough for everyone. Uh, it does have a Dolby Vision out of the box now. So 4K 60 Dolby Vision HDR 10 plus is supported natively. All you have to do is plug in a capable HDMI to a capable television and it just does the calibration and the color automatically. If your TV does support Dolby Vision, uh, the minute you plug in uh, the Apple TV, you'll get a pop-up sign that Dolby Vision is on and your TV will then basically showcase everything in Dolby Vision, which works really well and the colors just look phenomenal on uh, the new Apple TV. Apple TV is also faster now because of the A15 Bionic chip, which does enable all of those Dolby Vision type features, uh, but it is also much snappier switching between applications, just the uh, instant on and instant off of the Apple TV, it works flawlessly. The new remote is also slightly different from the previous gen. And uh, if you get an Ergo case like the one that I have, it is really comfortable in the hand. If you do like the cold touch of the metal remote, you can use it as it is. The main dial also acts as a touch surface, so you can still continue to navigate uh, with touch, which is excellent. New Bluetooth connectivity allows you to connect a current generation PlayStation controller and play iOS or iPad OS games uh, directly on uh, the TV OS. And uh, then uh, just the newer version of TV OS allows you to control your smart home devices. It acts as a hub and it also supports uh, some of the new Matter capabilities. Now, if you do have HomePods in your house, you can use them as external speakers or you can use AirPods or AirPods Max as your own speakers if you want a more private video watching experience. If you do have cameras, uh, you can view them in uh, the Apple TV as well. And of course you can control all your home devices directly from here. But overall, uh, the Apple TV is just much faster and is also a lot more capable. And as a previous Apple TV user, uh, this version is a significant upgrade, even though on the outside, it doesn't look like much has changed. On the inside, uh, just the capability is much uh, more enhanced and uh, the speed and the performance of the Apple TV is uh, quite impressive. If you want to use this as a at-home gaming console as well, because of the connectivity with uh, the PlayStation controller and uh, some of the other features, it just works really well. The new Apple TV 4K also has one issue, which is uh, that the remote keeps disconnecting. And I found out that if you completely remove the remote from a pairing from uh, the Apple TV and then repair the remote, uh, that problem goes away. So that was a quick fix, uh, but it's really bothersome because when you're using the Apple TV, if you leave your remote for some time, it gets disconnected and then you can't uh, control the Apple TV. Luckily, you can still do that from the iPhone uh, remote app. So if you have an iPhone, you can basically use the remote app to control the Apple TV. But if you're somebody who's buying this as a standalone and you don't have any Apple devices, uh, make sure you unpair and then repair the remote so that uh, that problem completely goes away. Now, you've been looking at everything on uh, the new QD OLED uh, from uh, Sony, the A95K, and uh, we are testing that right now, and uh, our video for this is coming out hopefully this week, so if you wanna stay tuned for that. If you have any particular questions for this TV as well, you can drop them in the comment section below. Uh, this is an impressive television, and also we have lots of other reviews, top tech, and lots of other things that we have been missing out on. Uh, we have to catch up on everything uh, going forward, so all of that will start. We have lots of new updates for you guys as well, and uh, some of the new things and add-ons to the iGAN Studio. Uh, we'll show you that in future videos as well. So if you guys are excited, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you've not already done that. Hit the bell notification icon. This has been Bharat. I'll see you guys in the next one.